Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for being here again with us for another episode of Secret Jews, Uncovering Hidden Traditions. This week's episode is, Was Columbus a Secret Jew? Pretty exciting. Stay with us. You're going to hear some very little known information. First, let's go ahead and give our sponsors their due. The Secret Jews of Calabria, Uncovering Jewish Traditions Hidden for Over 500 Years, a wonderful documentary. For more information about how to purchase your own copy or to how to have your group or organization actually host a viewing, visit rabbibarbara.com and you can get that information. Ibex Motion and Call Per Cal, documentary film as a key to our past and future. You can find out more about Carl by emailing him at cperkal, P-E-R-K-A-L, at netvision.net.il. And Rabbi Barbara Iello, Italy's first woman rabbi. For more information about rabbi and all the wonderful services that she offers, go ahead and visit rabbibarbara.com. And the William David Company, rethinking small business marketing since 2009. To find out your virtual engagement rating, visit WilliamDavidCompany.com. Well, first, let me go ahead and introduce our co-host for today, producer of Secret Jews movies, Carl Percal. Carl, welcome. Thank you for being here once again. I'm not here. I'm there. I'm in Israel. <laughs> if that's true, you are there. But we're there. there we're there virtually. Um, and Rabbi Barbara Aiello. Welcome, Rabbi. Hello. I am uh, here in Florida, but on my way back to Bella Italia. All right. Well, Carl, I think you're going to start us off with, uh, with, with this week's episode. Okay. I find it absolutely uh, mortifying that um, we're going to claim Columbus as one of our own as a Jew, because Columbus is such a problematic character and begins the beginning of... of the uh, European, let's call it the invasion, and in a sense destruction of the native populations of South America and North America. So I don't know. But on the other hand, that doesn't mean he wasn't a secret Jew. And I've got to, I, I know for sure, Rabbi, that there were Muranos or Conversos and secret Jews who made their way with the Spanish conquest to uh, South and North America. There's no question about that. And I'm going to tell you a little bit later about how they may have even made their way to the Navajo, Navajo Indians of Arizona. But I, I really want to ask, are we, are we happy to claim Columbus as, as our own? Is he, is he a secret Jewish hero? I believe he is. I believe that um, uh, Anthony, Anthony Baratta, who is um, the president of the Order of the Sons and Daughters of Italy in America, he wrote something recently. He said that regardless of what you think about Columbus, the, he, 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 he joined the old world of Europe to the new world of what was to become America, and his voyage changed the world forever. So, do we claim him as a Jew? Well, when you said you, you said that, yes, indeed, I'm going to go back to one little point you made, because you said, yes, indeed, there were Moranos on, the, on Columbus's ships. They, yes, and you, you um, uh, agreed to that. Well, my, I would say to you, who's going to let Jews on a ship except another Jew? Who happened to be captain or or organizer of the of the entire expedition, and so what do we know about um, Columbus's um, uh, background? Well, first of all, we know that his surname was Colon. Colon is a, a recognizable Spanish and Italian Jewish surname. We know that we believe that he was a secret Jew. And because he worked alongside of fellow Jews during the horrors of the persecution that were brought on by the Inquisition. Also, um, uh, in an opinion piece on a CNN um, uh, blog in 2012, an author by the name of Charles Garcia, actually I should call, it, call him a, a historian, he summarized what historians have long suspected and believe now that they've been able to co corroborate, and that is that, uh, that, that um, Columbus wrote and spoke in Castilian Spanish, which was Ladino, and uh, he, when he, in his letters that he wrote, he signed them off with a phrase meaning, with God's help, that only Spanish Jews 
wrote on their letters as a way of being able to identify one to another. But the most compelling evidence is in the museum, the Maritime Museum in Genoa, Italy. And there you can see Columbus's manifests from various of the many voyages that he took. And what is so com the most compelling evidence of all is that when he was evaluating his sailors, who was good, who was bad, who was obedient, who wasn't, he wrote in Hebrew. All of these manifests you can see written in Hebrew with the names of the sailors and how um, how how effective they were working on working on the working on the ships. Also, many people believed that um, that what Columbus was doing was he was taking action against the genocide of the Jews, and uh, the Jews were being persecuted at a horrible rate, as we know about the Inquisition. And there are historical accounts that say that Columbus and his compatriots would actually pull out of these long processionals, Jews that were being taken to be burned in the public square. They would rescue as many as they could, secret them onto the ships, and uh, and to um, uh, and to take them to the New World. Now we know that October 12, 1492, was important, an important date for two reasons. And of course, the obvious one is the day that Columbus set sail. Actually, it was also the same date that the Spanish Jews, by law, were given the choice of accepting forced conversion or leaving Spain, and uh, uh, and and leaving Spain, or if they remained, they would uh, be arrested. So the the um, judge the 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 fact that those that date holds two two very important historical events is part of the um, my argument that Columbus was indeed a secret Jew. An amazing historical uh, 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 question, and a lot has been written. I encourage everybody to just Google the topic. Was Columbus a Jew? And boom, you've got a day's worth of reading. But I'm going to tell you, I mean, there's no doubt that, that uh, B'nai Anusim forced Jew, Jews who were forced to convert, Jews who were secret Jews from Spain, went to the New World very early on. There's no question about that. And there's a tremendous amount of uh, work going on in the American Southwest, Arizona, New Mexico, because of, of n anecdotal reports from Hispano families, Spanish families that go back a few hundred years in uh, Arizona, New Mexico, who begin also to come with stories of their Jewish kinds of traditions. But I'll tell you what happened to me, if we have a moment. While we were making the film, my uh, two buddies I went to visit in Arizona said, hey, let's go to Navajo country. We'll go to Page, uh, uh, Arizona, and uh, we're going to do a nice walk through the Antelope Canyon with a Navajo uh, a guide, and then we'll head back to Sedona. And so they knew, my friends knew, that I was making this film about the secret Jews of Calabria with Rabbi Barbara. And uh, we get to uh, Page, Arizona, and we meet up with our tour guide, a very Navajo-looking woman, about 40 years old, very knowledgeable of all the nature and history. And we're with another couple from Philadelphia, and we get to the entrance to the canyon, and she says, so where are you all from? And the couple says, we're from Philadelphia. My friend says he's from Phoenix. The other's from Sedona. I said, I'm from Israel. She looks at me, and speaking to me now in Hebrew, this is a Navajo, American Navajo, Native American, speaking to me in Hebrew, says, oh, I'm Jewish. All the women, the women's line in my family are Jewish. And then she goes back to English and she says, in our family, the women, the Navajo warriors defeated the conquistadores in a battle. They would kill the men and they would take the women and children into their families and the women would very often become wives and become within a generation integrated into the Navajo tribes. And this uh, woman said to me, oh, that's our family. The women pass it on from generation to generation and we know that we are Jewish. And she spoke some Hebrew that she learned not through the family, but just by coming to visit Israel. She knew Jewish prayers. She said she lights candles on Friday. And there was no doubt in her mind that she was Jewish. Now, I don't know if anybody from the Navajo nation in Arizona has ever tried coming to live in Israel under the law of return and getting citizenship, but there are uh, there are definitely uh, 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 South American uh, uh, locals who claim Jewish uh, uh, background. So uh, there it is, whether Columbus was or not, 
we know that there was a strong uh, uh, secret Jewish influence. Let me tie this into Columbus, if I can, because uh, Columbus, of course, took many, many voyages. Uh, you can find um, Jewish presence all throughout the Caribbean islands as well, because various of the ships stopped, and uh, the deep water port was in St. Thomas. That was also the place where, where in the, during the slave trade, the, the slaves who were ill were taken off the boat, and it was the Jewish doctors, the Spanish Jewish Moranos doctors, who treated them and made sure that they were never again put on another boat and, uh, and remained in, in, in the Caribbean. Also, uh, there, there's um, evidence of Columbus's voyages in Puerto Rico, also in, in, um, in Mexico, and, and uh, my, uh, my aunt, may she rest in peace, Elisabetta Aiello, was from uh, uh, Santa Fe, New Mexico, and she did a lot of, a lot of historical work on the on the Moranos in in the in the Southwest, not not only or not a little in Arizona, but as I said, she was from New Mexico, and she believed that the entire Caucasian popul histor population historically in Mexico were all Jewish, and that the exactly what your Navajo friend told you is what uh, his his Southwest historians believe that the conquistadors were were um, vanquished the women were kept alive and uh, and the and the and Judaism was passed along through these Caucasian women to the native pop, to the native populations and uh, my aunt was uh, I, I Every year, a um, a New Mexican is named a New Mexico treasure. And one year, my aunt Elizabetha was named a New Mexico treasure for this particular work that she did. No. Well, Rabbi, let yeah. me. Well, let maybe me just somebody stop. who's watching this is gonna. I think that if people are watching this broadcast, they're gonna say, "Oh, I've got a story to tell." So they can contact Rabbi Barbara on our website, RabbiBarbara.com, and we should also mention that on the website they can see a trailer and some clips from the movie The Secret Jews of Calabria and after that they may even be inspired to purchase the DVD which is available also through RabbiBarbara.com and I I don't know that it's gonna happen I mean you, you know I don't like to make promises as we say but um, but I would like to to find my way back to the American Southwest and and do um, the secret Jews of the American Southwest, or as my uh, screenwriter friend said, we'll call the movie Navajo Shmavajo. Navajo Shmavajo. <laughs> well, you know, I did. Um, uh, uh, I, I have a radio program called the Radio Rabbi uh, every, every Sunday morning, and uh, uh, I do um, a program every year on Elvis's yard site and uh, talk about Elvis Presley's Jewish roots. Oh, come on. Ver verifiable, absolutely verifiable. Halakhically ha Jewish, up back through his great grandmother, and uh, and there was a film made in Canada about this. And I talked to the filmmakers one year, and their film is called Elvis Schmovis. <laughs> right, well, before we digress too much, let me, uh, <laughs> I digress. Before, let me just bring I think it back that's here. Very relevant, me. but he wasn't um, Italian. No. I didn't know he was an Italian. So, Robert, let me let me just add. This is very interesting, and and having been you know raised in the states, and we we studied Columbus, you know, probably every year from second grade through high school. Nobody ever talks about this. So, if there is all this evidence, to me, you just convinced me when you said that his um his navigational records were written in Hebrew. Why else? Could someone give an explanation as to why would he be writing in Hebrew, not an easy language to learn, speak, or write in, for sure. Exactly. What would be the explanation for that other than he was raised Jewish? Absolutely. Well, wait a second. I, I just want to give one point on this. <laughs> there were many, many Europeans, European, educated Europeans who studied Hebrew uh, uh, as well as Greek, uh, ancient Greek, Latin and so forth. So uh, it's not um, totally uh, uh, unreasonable that, and he was very connected to the Bible. This we know. So you know we could find other reasons, but I'm willing to I'm willing to give him the the, the credit. What do you think, Rabbi? Um, let me say. <laughs> 
<laughs> that um, uh, yes, indeed, there were it, Hebrew was the language of scholars and the language, of course, the original language of the Bible. But I would have to say that in his personal correspondence, which he peppered with Hebrew phrases, was a way of identifying one Jew to another at a time when it was very dangerous to do so. So that's, and, uh, Robert, just to interrupt you, that it was kind of like a, a code that they used. Like a code, yes, so they, indeed. They could yes. be familiar without divulging their their Jewish They're, background. Yes, when you put the two of them together, put the uh, writing in Hebrew and the in the manifest together with these identifiable phrases, and these were phrases when he these were this is personal correspondence when he was trying to get money for his expeditions. So this is how he was identifying himself to other moneyed Jews. So that's that is important as well. These were these were families of means, and he was trying to gather funds, and so he was identifying himself as a Jew to to potential donors. And uh, um, but just as um, as with so many of our uh, Jewish ancestors, we have evidence of their of their um, humanitarian traits. We have evidence of their character traits that weren't so good, and um, uh, and the fact that um, that Columbus um, may have wanted to prevent a genocide of the Jewish people, which he definitely helped to helped in that regard because of his expeditions, is something we Jews could possibly be very proud of and applaud. And Rabbi, what about, um, the, I understand what you just said, that he obviously was instrumental in, in saving many Jewish lives, but is, is that a, a testament to actually that he was Jewish? Because you know, anyone watching this has seen Schindler's List, who wasn't Jewish, who ultimately had this, you know, cause that, that he found as a humanitarian. So, you know, what what is what supports that he just maybe wasn't a good person? Well, the fact that what happened when he got to the New World, all of the things that uh, many um, um, uh, Native Americans do not want to celebrate or um, uh, uh, celebrate Columbus's um, expeditions or colonization because of what was done to Native Americans. But uh, there's also evidence that Columbus was not the, the horrible person that many people say he was, uh, that these were other people on the expeditions as well. And uh, who knows? Uh, the fact of the matter is we need to keep looking, we need to keep studying, and, uh, um, and, and I believe the fact that, that, that Columbus was identifying himself as a Jew to other Jews of means in order to save Jews is indication, is indication of his, Jew, of his Jewish background. Well, I, I think that this it was, it was an, an amazing topic, and uh, uh, I think it's something that we should all keep be open-minded to, and is, this is just another great example of so many hidden Jewish stories, traditions, that we are going to uncover for you here every week. So, um, Rabbi or Carl, do you have any uh, last thoughts before we close I, out this episode? I, I, think, I think we're all going to um, look at Columbus Day a little bit differently now. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, I grew up uh, with, uh, they call it in New York, uh, Christmas envy. I mean, my Aunt Dora used to take me to sit on Santa's knee at Macy's on 34th Street, and Santa would say, so little boy, what would you like for Hanukkah? And I'm thinking, you know, the same thing. We can we can adopt Columbus Day as uh, as part of our uh, as part of our own tradition. I think it's, um, you know, if you look at the ebb and flow of uh, history in general and Jewish history certainly, and the mass movement of people across continents uh, over centuries and over time. I mean, it's 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 this is part of that story. Uh, if it wasn't for all of these horrible events that took place in Spain, we wouldn't have all of these uh, amazing traditions. And, um, you know, my family on my mother's side, as I say, went to Greece, to Salonika, what was then the Ottoman Empire, the Muslim Ottoman Empire, where the Jews were welcomed in. Now today you'd say, how could this be? The, the Sultan in Istanbul said, please come to the Ottoman Empire, you'll have you know freedom, you'll be able to do business, you can keep your traditions, nobody will force you to become Muslim. And Salonika became, uh, in the 15, 16, 1700s, I think the, uh, one of the large, probably the largest Jewish city in the world. It was more than half of Salonika was Jewish. And my family to this day, I have 
cousins whom I'm in touch with who are in, in Salonika. So I'm just blown away by finding a connection here to, to Columbus, one way or the other. All right, well, we're going to close out this week's episode. We want to thank you again for joining us. Uh, this week's Secret Jewish episode was, was Columbus a secret Jew? You've heard the information. It's now up to you to make a decision which side you want to be on. Or maybe you need some more information. You can do that research on your own. This was another episode of Secret Jews, Uncovering Hidden Jewish History. On behalf of myself, Dr. Randy Ross, and your co-hosts, producer Carl Prakal and Rabbi Barbara Aiello. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you back here in the next episode. See you soon. Bye now.